beginning on 11.30. And you'll get a chance to uh, just enjoy those that weren't with us yesterday an exciting service. All right, I'm supposed to, what I'm going to do is introduce Lady Rubin. Come, Lady Rubin, always looking so lovely, so glamorous. And as she's coming, I want to thank you, those that were praying. Remember last week, I needed that prayer to lose the uh, weight that I put on by the children here. And I got within a half a pound of what I had been. So keep praying, and I can go on to that mark that I'm looking forward to. God is good. I'll tell you, God is good. And I'm doing that, being married to the world's greatest cook. So you got to pray real hard. All right. There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving. of God to worship and praise God. And I tell you, uh, we've had such a wonderful time with our Sunday school lesson this morning. And everybody that had something to say talked all through what I was going to say. So I probably don't need to do nothing but sing the rest of that song and sit down. But my thought for today is what I was thinking about was distractions. And this morning in the last like 10 minutes before I got up here, it, it, it proved to me what distractions will do to you. But we are inundated with distractions all around us and we don't always talk about it, but we need to be reminded that the things that are happening around us are just distractions for Satan to make us take our eyes off the prize, eye off of what we're supposed to be doing, our purpose and our destination. And we surely don't want to do that. The scripture that I chose was, as uh, Elder Tucker this morning in our Sunday school lesson, he read the same scripture that I was gonna read. So I know the Lord wants us to know this. At this time, he read Philippians 4 and 6, and it said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and in supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which patheth all understanding, shall keep your hearts. He's trying to keep us our hearts. He's trying to keep us from being distracted our minds through the Lord Jesus Christ. Distraction, one of the dangerous, dangerous tactics that Satan has against the people of God. Our fundamental and most dangerous problem in distraction is being distracted from God. We have a tendency to shift our attention from God to the things of this world. And this morning I heard a teaching and it says, and all of that is idolatry. On Thursday, they played a tape from Michelle Obama and she expressed the feeling of having low grade 
depression. This depression thing is going around and saints get depressed also. And it's going around. She was feeling hopeless about the political situation and the pandemic and the suffering of her fellow Americans. And it was causing a depression, a, a feeling that things are hopeless. When we look around and see the way things are going, it, it, it looks pretty hopeless. But we know that God is in control. Many of our Christian brothers and sisters are experiencing the same feelings. All these things are provoking fear. And fear ignites a decision, and most of the time, the wrong decisions. Distractions are constantly pulling us from pulling our time, our motion, and our focus. And I have certainly not perfected the art of not being distracted, but I'm learning to become more aware. And that's what I want to do today, to make you aware that all of these things are just distractions. I can begin to uh, overcome some of these distractions more quickly when I am aware that they are just distractions. The song says, I woke up this morning with my mind, stay on Jesus. That's what we got to do every day. Wake up in the morning with our mind, stay on Jesus. I'm reminded of a person in the Bible by the name of Nehemiah who was sent to build back the walls of Jerusalem. And he was distracted by Sanballat and Tobiah. They were there every day trying to distract him from the work of the Lord. And what did big Nehemiah do? He says, I'm doing a good work. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm doing a good work. I'm not going to come down. And we need to have that same, that very same attitude. We will not come back down. Distractions are designed to keep us off track and not focus on our destiny and purpose. That is why we have to intentionally yes. focus forward. I'm keeping heaven in my view every day. I'm keeping heaven in my view. The antidote for distraction is staying focused and through prayer and accountability. I owe God my focus. I owe him that. He's done so much for us that we owe him that. As we choose to submit to God and resist the devil, they said if we resist the devil, you will resist him, he'll flee from you. You won't be distracted anymore. And it tells us that if we resist him, he will flee. Yes. There's a song that comforts my heart, my soul, and it says, guide me, oh God, great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Y'all know this ain't our home. We're just here temporarily. This is not our home. I am weak, but thou almighty, hold me with thy powerful hand. It said, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, please feed me till I want no more. Hold me by that powerful hand. I plan to keep my mind stayed on Jesus so that he will keep me in perfect peace. Don't get distracted. Stay focused. Stay prayerful. Stay with the Lord. God bless you. I got to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Now, is it a distraction when I'm endeavoring to lose those next few pounds that you cook, the kind of dinners that you cook? I'm going to be tired. You're going to be tired from cooking? I'm going to get rid of my dogs. I'm going to be tired. <laughs> now, you, you heard that, but it's not going to happen <laughs> because it's in her suit. No matter how many times she's yeah. not going to cook, somehow, somehow in the middle of the night, in the early the morning, I hear pots, I hear pans. Keep this right with me. God bless you. 
You know, I'm so grateful. I keep mentioning you here in the sanctuary. Okay. We have a team that does come in. We have our drummer. There's a superb job in helping. We have our keyboard and organ player. Brother Williams who always has great words to say to us. And Dr. Luke, I tell you, she can sing, can't she? Of course, Lady Ruben sings and share with us. And today we have two of the folks with us, and they're going to pray us through. There's some praying people, some godly people. We're just as glad to go out to be with us today. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to have prayer. I'm going to ask Dr. Luke to come to give us our smile solo. And then we're going to share God's word. And there's a list of names, a number of people that are dealing with serious health issues that I know of. I spoke to Mother Harper today. She's in the hospital, but she sounded strong. She had some breathing challenges, and uh, well, she's on a purpose to want total healing. A young man by the name of Emmanuel Lundy. Um, well, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and uh, was shot. And it's amazing what God did for him. The bullet literally went through his throat. But uh, he had been breathing on his own. He had some surgery. I guess that was Friday night and uh, Thursday night or Friday night. And he is doing well. We're going to be together to go see him today. Sister Melissa is at home. Uh, Sister Gina had a scare, but she's doing well. She was serving yesterday singing. Uh, Sister Bodie's father. And the list, the list, the list, the list goes on. But you know what? God is not limited. God is not limited. He's not only able to bless each of those names, but your name is on his list to bless. I need those in the sanctuary to stand with me. Because it's prayer time. And we always start prayer by thanking God for what He's about to do. We thank Him because He told us to bring our requests known unto Him with thanksgiving. Are you ready to pray with me? Are you ready to let God move upon your heart? Are you ready to let the Lord go and touch that one you're praying for, the one you're crying out for? If the need is in your life, are you ready for God to say by your faith, you are made whole? If you can feel God about to do any of those things, I want you to begin to just thank Him and to praise Him and to worship Him. Father, in the name of your Son, we're here in your sanctuary, a place of prayer. Grace will we come to beseech you. A place where lives are impacted and changed. A place where your love prevails in the midst of the people. But right now, somebody needs your touch. Not just the names I mentioned. Go to Sister Anne. She needs your touch of healing as well. Lord, the names that I can't recall right now, the names that are too numerous to mention, you're able to touch, you're able to bless. Not bind every doubt and fear. Not bind anything that would come against these or something else. Let your spirit, let your anointing rest upon you. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for what you're going to do. And as we share that word, say your anointing. Give us the ear to heal with the spirit at the same to the church. Somebody tell them thank you right now. Somebody praise them. Somebody give God the glory. And Dr. Luke is coming to give us our spine solo. Let's give you the praise. Because God is getting ready to do something wonderful in your life. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. He can't down, hopes can't get in a pain. As for me, all I can say
folks without homes. They're living out in the streets. And the drug habits are safe. They just can't be. Fathers and robbers, no place to be safe. Blessing the Lord, that you are 
gifted and talented. And I'm so glad that I have gifted singers and musicians around me uh, because I'm only up to go away. I'm not even sure what we got to go away. So we're blessed, we're blessed. And I say that because there's a section of lessons I'm going to eventually teach on the hour of fellowship. There are some of the leadership and teamwork laws. And one of them is an important one. One is an insignificant number to achieve greatness. One is an insignificant number to achieve greatness. So when you're surrounded with talented, gifted people, uh, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. So I look forward to teaching those lessons. There's some folks can do some teaching before I get to those. I'm looking for Elder Farron, that was boy. Maybe we'll recruit some others on the hour of fellowship before we go into those lessons. All right, I need you to turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 12. I'm going to read it beginning at verse 11 to verse 15. Acts, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 11. And when Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for surety that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectations of the people, the Jews, and when he had considered the thing, came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to Martin, named Wilbur. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. They said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And they said, it is an angel. All right. I have on my notes the thought that states those that pray can expect a miracle. I'm going to add to that as a subtopic. Don't just pray, believe. Don't just pray, believe. Uh, like you, I have been blessed to be exposed to the teachings of others. And we're, we're blessed when we're around folks that can teach us, that can share with us, uh, folks that have been through what we're about to go through, and they add to our information they have, to our knowledge. And of course, there's some things that we have to learn for ourselves. I spent nearly 40 years serving a gentleman by the name of Pastor Bonner. And uh, he impacted my spiritual life, especially in the area of prayer. Prayer was a major part of his ministry. Either prayer, corporate prayer, as well as praying for others. Prayer was so much a part of his lifestyle that generally, I believe it was Elder Xavier Moore, wrote a song, Jesus is Walking the Airways. And part of that song was that statement, those that pray can expect a miracle. He was endeavoring to teach us not only the importance of going through prayer, but the importance of when you pray, believe, trust. I don't ask people for anything that I don't think they have the ability or the willingness to do. I was mentioning uh, Lady Rubin's cooking. I never mind asking her, could you cook this, could you cook this, could you cook this? Because
No, she has the skills. And since she hasn't retired, but yet she still has been willing. Now she claims she's going to retire. I'll give you a report on that in a couple of weeks. But you don't ask people anything that you don't think that you either can do or willing to do. I'm with prayer. We're making this statement to the Lord. I know that you're able to do this. But we need to move from the I know that you're able to do that to have the expectation that is going to take place in our life. Yes, I pray that God heals you, God strengthens you, God delivers you. But when I need to be healed, I need to have the expectation that there's going to be response to my prayer, response to my petition. And that's why we stress, as you notice each Sunday when we pray as a competition, that I emphasize with thanksgiving. This is what God told us to do. When we listen to the words of the scripture, when it says, come boldly to the throne of grace, when it makes those statements that we like to shout about, Praise the Lord, if you abide in me and let your word abide in you, you can ask anything. It's God's statement telling us, I want you to pray with expectation. When we look at the scripture that I read today, there's certain things that stand out to me. Things about Peter and things about those that made up the early church. The church leaders understood the power of prayer. They were praying to folks. They were folks that not only went to the temple at the hour of prayer, but they demonstrated the belief and knowledge. You remember the lessons and the preaching that we've been sharing about Peter going to the temple and seeing that lame man and in the name of Jesus come back to rise up and walk. They understood, they understood, they understood. But as I read these verses of scripture, I'm not so sure that the saints recognize the power in prayer. What am I talking about? Peter found himself in prison. Herod was endeavoring to destroy the leadership of the church. He understood the law of the lady go no higher than the leaders. And so he first took the life of James of the time, and then he decided on going after Peter. But Peter runs his mouth too much. Every time we try to get him to shut up, he starts saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Every time we try to stop him from talking about he talked about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Here I felt that I could stop this Peter. I could really get this church to fall apart. And he took Peter and he had him arrested, put him into the prison, and tied up between two guards. But because it was the hospital season, he knew he could not. Take a sign then. When the season is over, I'm going to turn them over to the Jews and they're going to do what we did, the Romans did to Jesus himself. So we locked him up. And he is Peter locked up in the prison. Now, one of my favorite scriptures is found in this portion of scripture. It speaks about Peter being in prison, but the church. Pray without ceasing. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? Praise the Lord. Every shepherd, every member of a church wants to be surrounded with folks that know how to pray. They went over to the mother of John Mark's house and they called up a prayer meeting. And it wasn't a 10 minute, a 15 minute, or 20 minute prayer meeting. They prayed without ceasing. 
They cried out, Lord, Peter's in prison. Set them free. Peter's locked up. Set them free. Peter is going to be killed. Set them free. And they pray. They pray and they pray and they pray. Somehow they couldn't sense what the Spirit was about to do. Somehow they, they kept that fervency in prayer and we applaud them for that. While they were praying, they didn't seem to realize that God had responded to the prayer. The Lord sent an angel. Now, if I go back to Peter, Peter was calm. Peter was at ease. Peter just accepted the fact I lived my life to the point that God is going to take me. James was taken now. He's going to take me, but that's all right. Because I'm going to be with the Lord. So Peter was not anxious. He was not all shook up. But he accepted the fact that this was the end of his life. I'm not quite sure why he didn't try to get a friend through. But he was at ease. I, I suppose I could suggest the Lord let that peace of God that passes all understanding inside the spirit. And while he is tied up between these two soldiers, here comes the angel. The angel taps Peter. Get up, buddy. I'm going to take you out of here. Peter feels that it's either a dream or a vision that he doesn't understand what's happening. But the angel gets him to rise up and as he does, the chains are broken from him. God seemed like they were still sleeping, and still Peter doesn't quite understand what's happening. Whatever happened to you, God starts blessing you, God starts moving on your behalf, God starts turning the thing in your favor, and you don't understand. The Lord has heard my eyes, the Lord has heard my prayer, the Lord has heard my petition. And it wasn't until he finally got to the outer gate, he looked around. Wait a minute. I have surely been set free. Looks around and doesn't see any change, doesn't see any, and understand God has set me free. If God has set you free, then I'm not at you to praise him right now. Have you ever been set free by God? Don't tell us how to read the Lord. So, he's excited about his freedom. He wants to go and, and let the, the brethren know what God had done. So he rushes over to the house where they're praying. He comes to the house and he knocks. Young that so she must have been the one that they just sent on the errands. I suppose all the, the mothers and, and, and the preachers and those who are titled, they, they stayed in prayer, but they said, brother, go see who's at the door. We're going to stay in prayer. Brother gets to the gate and she hears the voice of Peter. And she gets so excited that she doesn't open up the gate. She runs back and tells everybody, God heard on earth, it's Peter. And they look at this young lady. Now remember, the church has been proud cease. They've been. No, I need to rephrase that. They been, I suppose, I'm going to be saying some stuff. They were doing something, but they weren't expecting anything. They were going through some motion, and I'm afraid that sometimes that's what you and I do. We're either just venting, we're either just expressing our thoughts, or expressing this, that, and the other. But when you pray, you ought to know God's going to do something. When you pray, you ought to know that Jesus Christ is going to work a miracle. When you pray, you ought to have a thanksgiving. You ought to have a hallelujah in your spirit. When you pray, you ought to be ready to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. But they didn't see all of that. Praise the Lord. They were praying without expectation. But I'm supposed to tell somebody this morning, I'm supposed to tell somebody that when you pray, you can expect something. Because those oh, that pray can expect a miracle. You're not talking just to the ceiling. You're talking to a God that told you to come before. 
You're talking to a God that knows everything that you're going to do. You're talking to a God that knows that you're crying out to him. And in fact, before you even open up your mouth, God is getting ready to send the angel. He's getting ready to send the victim. He's getting ready to send your into your spirit. Can I get somebody in the house to understand that those that pray, any praying folks, I don't need folks that just say you pray, but folks that know God will hear my spot. And in fact, every time you spot the prayer, you can feel the sense of the spirit that I heard your cry. I heard your petition, and I'm dispatching an angel right now. And if I don't send an angel, I'll come by myself. But victory is on your way. Tell yourself, I've been praying, and God heard my cry, and victory belongs to it. Can I find somebody in the temple right now that can wave your hand and shout the victory? If you're a praying man, a praying woman, don't just pray, but accept God. In fact, that you can accept the miracle. I want you to stop praising him right now. I'm going to thank him. Oh, yes, I am. I've been praying for this kind of deal. And I'm going to thank God right now. I'm going to lift my voice and shout hallelujah. I'm going to shout hallelujah. Can I get everybody to join? Oh, I'm faithful.
stronger. She affirmed and told them, you can call me mad, but I know what I saw. God heard our cry, and Peter is not at the gate. So get ready to pray for you today. I want you to know that your victory is standing outside the gates. Why not pray with you today? You've got to go to that gate and open it up. You've got to go and open it up. As you're walking towards that gate, you're seeing exactly what you have prayed for. I don't know if it's spiritual, emotional, financial, health issue, but your victory is standing outside the gates. I'm taking this oil and anointing myself. I lost my sister. She went off to the side so not to interfere with the service. But I'm anointing myself right now. And as you come, I want you to see yourself opening up the gates. Beyond that gate is what you've been crying for, what you've been asking God for. And you may not be the spirit. I'm not going to just pray. I'm going to believe. I'm going to expect. God is going to hear my cry and send my victory. Father, in the name of your son, these are your sons and your daughters. These are your children. They love you. They worship you. They magnify you. These are those that call you God all by yourself. These are those that lift a voice and shout hallelujah. They're coming today to open up the gate. Accept the fact that you've heard their cry. You've heard their prayer. You've heard their petition. Oh, do it for your glory. Do it for your honor right now. And I'll thank you. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We'll worship you. We'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those that pray and expect the miracle. Don't just pray. Believe. Don't just pray. Believe. I feel like shouting a little bit. Doing I could. But I want to talk to you before it's too late. Each Sunday. I thank you. I thank you for your support. I thank you for your giving. I thank you for being a part of our Facebook team, our Zoom team. You join with us Monday through Friday, with us on Sunday morning. I'm talking not just to the members of Community Refuge, but those that you allow me to share with you on a regular basis. Some of you I've known throughout the years. I gave reference to Pastor Bonner today. I've traveled to each of his churches and I was blessed to interact with so many of you. But I want to remind you that your giving is so appreciative, so grateful. You're trying to accomplish much in the sharing of the gospel and various projects that we're doing. And your help, your help, your help is allowing us. And to our members, I am so grateful because you not only send your tithes and offerings, but you don't forget the education. We don't forget the consecration offering. You put that in there as well. Some listed separately, some just spoken together. But you are givers, and I thank you. And I've told others in the past, I'm, I'm a tiger, I believe in that. But even if I didn't believe in that particular system, anything, 
and I'm a part of anything that is a blessing to me, anything that I want. I'll go back and tell a part of I'm going to invest as much as I can. And I found this out. You can't beat God giving it, no matter how hard you try. I made a sacrifice last week. And you know what the Lord did? He sent me twice that amount plus two days later. So I'm tired off of that. And I'll continue to give because it's a reality. As God leads you, as God directs you, you just can't be and give it. Those on two who can see the four ways to give, let me explain that to Facebook folks. Uh, we have a cash app, and it's dollar sign CR Church. Dollar sign CR Church. You can go online to the Community Refuge Church of Christ or website. And on the home page, you can give. And, and somebody actually added the fifth. They went to uh, our morning reflections uh, or website and they made a contribution that way. Of course, we still have the post office here in Alabama. And I say that because some of our government leaders are trying to uh, destroy the postal system. But we're still functioning, and our address is. P.O. Box 725 Manalapin. I love to spell this. M A N A L A P A N, New Jersey 07726. And yes, those that are local, they do come and, and drop off. They'll call me up. I'll go outside with my mask on and they give you the times and offerings and gifts. Now, to those that will be with us next Sunday, uh, if you're bringing your tithes and offering, you can still do it online, but if you're bringing it, uh, just put it in an envelope, have your name on it, and you'll be able to, uh, to leave it with us. We don't want to get involved with uh, loose money and making change and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to bring an offering, just you put it in an envelope, put your name on it, and we'll be able to see that through the your finance committee. All right. Tomorrow, we'll be back on Facebook Live. And Tuesday night, I uh, am teaching uh, our fellowship. And the lesson is entitled, God's role, my role. And there's some things that you and I are supposed to do. And some things only God can do. So we're going to review those things, God's role, my role. And then you've heard the schedule for the week, so I won't be redundant. You go to our Facebook and see it, go to our church website and see it. But we're looking forward to God's blessings to be in your life. Again, I, I thank each and everyone that's here with us today, and I thank those that did a great job in our uh, regular service uh, education, however, tougher and those that have impacted us now today. So, next Sunday, We'll be on Zoom and Facebook for the committee at 11 30. And you'll get to see the praise team. You'll get to see uh, folks off in the corner that you don't see on camera. So keep us in prayer, keep us in prayer, keep us in prayer. And this is my last device to you before we get ready to conclude. I'm looking at my assistant. She's going to help me off of Facebook in just a second. But Think of that phrase. Don't just pray, believe. Uh, I'll give some credit to my son. He has a book, wait. Don't just pray, wait. I'm saying to you just don't pray, believe. Facebook, look to see it tomorrow at 12 noon. They ruin if you just hit that button and